Hey everybody, how's it going? Getting some really nice snow right now. This is our first real good snow of the year. We've got about, I don't know, maybe 14 inches of snow already and uh, still snowing, as you can see. And um, we are exactly, this is Sunday, the what, uh, whatever it is, one week exactly before Christmas. So just thought I would do sort of a little bit of a walk and talk type of a thing here walk back in the woods a little bit one of our trails and um, just a couple of things on my mind I'd like to kind of talk about and I'd like to get some feedback from the body of Christ on or anybody really uh, I don't have to be saved necessarily but that certainly helps um, to give me advice in other words the uh, one of the things I've thought about a lot recently is this whole left-right paradigm thing you know um, obviously America is in a lot of trouble as most countries are in a lot of trouble right now and it's not because of the Republicans or the Democrats if you're an American uh, that's you can't blame it on one political party or one ideology or whatever else uh, understanding the devil ultimately there's a lot of different groups that serve the devil, but ultimately Satan um, tries to divide people. And the Lord said in the Bible about that if a house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. Well, a country that's divided against itself isn't going to stand either. And um, I remember seeing a video of an older man and a coin dealer, a precious metals coin dealer, and he said... You know, back in the past, he said, you could have Democrats and Republicans that get along. And it would, you know, you could talk and discuss things and whatever else, agree to disagree. My grandparents, on my mother's side, my maternal grandparents, were Democrats, lifelong Democrats. And they get along fine with uh, my Republican um, paternal grandparents. There wasn't any kind of family fighting and call the police or whatever else. But uh, the lines of uh, battle lines, so to speak, the uh, lines of demarcation, if you will, are getting so pronounced now that I see it just as kind of an, an inevitable thing that there's going to have to be some kind of fighting or something. And I don't, you know, it's, it's be nice to say, well, we don't have to have that happen. It's going to happen, you know. And the liberal agenda right now is getting so far out of control with the, you know, sex perversion that we're just supposed to accept. And it's okay, and we should eventually be okay with pedophiles and whatnot. And some pervert wants to use the, he identifies as a woman for a day, and he wants to use the restroom at the same time as my wife or something. Uh, no, that's not acceptable. Um... And so I guess my thinking is on this whole thing, as Christians, what are we supposed to do in this situation? Um, because it's not some kind of a thing where you can just sort of take a middle ground thing and, well, just preach the gospel, just preach the gospel. I hear that one a lot. Um, Americans have been preaching the gospel for a very long time, and yet the country continues to go downhill. And you and I both know that there are a lot of people that have heard the gospel and they claim to accept the gospel. They go to church and they are just as wicked as could be. Um, the gospel, the true gospel is the fix. I get that. But you know for sure that most people who call themselves Christians have not accepted the true gospel. You know that. You can see that. Their lives do not line up with the scriptures. And so... Uh, obviously the Bible prophesies the igniting the right movement the Catholic Church will take over um, that's there obviously uh, but what do we how do we avoid being sucked into that movement because quite frankly it's getting really disgusting all this woke stuff and all the things that are you know coming out trying to ignite the right by all this reverse racism stuff, you know, it's, it's not really reverse racism, it's just racism, 
you know, where black people are supposed to, I'm supposed to bow and please ask, you know, please forgive me for what my ancestors did. Well, my ancestors were pacifistic Mennonites in, in uh, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. We were in the north. We didn't have slaves. How can I uh, ask forgiveness for something that my ancestors weren't even part of? So, but, you know, there's just so much of this stuff in this left-wing agenda to take away the guns in this country, um, they won't stop. <laughs> they won't quit. Hey, we have a Second Amendment right. Shall not be infringed. Uh, too bad, we're just going to keep on pushing for it, and we'll, if we can't get your guns, we'll take the large capacity magazines away, and then we'll take this and we'll take that. Um, it's just insane. Uh, so, give me your thoughts on that. Um, I know prayer, obviously we pray, pray very hard um, for the country and for our leaders and whatever else. And again, our leaders aren't the people that are elected. I hope you do realize that. Um, they're just puppets, they're speech readers, actors. Uh, the real power is behind the scenes telling them what to do, writing the speeches and whatnot. So, this heavy snow really pulls the trees down like this you can see so usually I walk through here and I, I don't have my stick right now but I'll get a long stick and just whack the trees and let the snow fall off and then they go back up if you're not from the north you probably wouldn't understand that but uh, and if you don't a lot of times the trees will bend and uh, snap they'll break so it's a good thing to try to you know knock the snow off of them but uh, so that's one thing I've been thinking about. And uh, another thing, I guess, is just the natural cycle of things that I've been thinking about, where you have uh, people try things and they give it some time. And they say, you know what? Uh, this new version is supposed to be easier to understand. I'm going to give it some time and I'm going to see if it makes a change in my life. And they give it a couple years and whatever. And, it's not really helping me. <laughs> uh, I think I should probably go with another version or another version or whatever else, just to use the Bible version issue as a example. This tree here is leaning pretty bad. You can see it right there. So you just bump it and there it goes. Back up again, like a little catapult. Uh, now it's nice and straight. So that's why it's good to do this. And of course you have, there's another one. Let me whack this one. There it goes. Oh, don't drop on the camera lens, please. <laughs> so, um, but what I'm saying is, um, you know, th this whole, oh, here comes Luther. Hey, boy. Found me, huh? Good job. Uh, this whole... Bible version issue. Um, if you study history, you'll see that most of these Bible versions, they don't last for more than a few years. They will, um, they come out and they're published and whatever else and the publishers, they're just out there to make money. And it'll go a few years, people, oh, it's the newest, latest, greatest, newest, most accurate translation ever made. You know, they just use the same old, you know, lies over and over again. And uh, it goes for a little bit of time, the people abandon it. And I think this trend of the new versions, uh, it's prophesied that people are going to be dying for the word of God. So the trend of the new versions, I think is going to come to an end. And so Lord's been kind of dealing with me lately. Uh, there's always some sermon topic that I'm interested in doing, but I've been really thinking a lot that I need to get back to the kicking these new versions because I'm seeing people coming along and they're saying, you know, Brian, what, what version should I use? Is the new King James version okay? I'm thinking, you know, King James Video Ministries. I thought that'd be fairly obvious, but I get it. There's people that are brand new, the whole deal. I understand. Um, so I'd like to hear your thoughts on that too. And um, another thing along those lines, uh, the... I've used an overhead camera setup 
before if you've seen some of my older videos I use the camera and I'll actually show on the page here it is this is where it says it the whole thing which is a great way to document stuff but um, it is it's very time intensive a lot of editing and whatever else and my time just seems to grow shorter as time goes by um, my son gets older I have to spend a lot more time homeschooling him and you know we're teaching him a lot of different subjects right now um, and I have to answer people and and whatever I mean it's that takes a long time and um, so I praise the Lord for the ministry I'm not complaining but uh, what I was going to say there with the new version thing should I do the overhead camera thing to show the actual print here it is whatever or should I just go to something like Bible Gateway and just take screenshots whoa a little slippery um, in other words I can still show the text of the King James Bible but you know show the online form of it and just leave it up to the people you do your own work if you have the new King James Version go get your new King James Version and look this up give me your thoughts I'd like to hear your thoughts on that uh, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to make a mention of um, uh, can't think of anything else right now uh, just frustrating with uh, everything that's going on in our country and just seeing the extreme wickedness that people are getting themselves into um, just so disturbing but I will say this in conclusion I will talk about my upcoming study uh, this thing I did about the sixth and seventh kingdoms of the Lord Jesus Christ and there are some things that, that kind of ticked me off about people and whatever else, false movements and whatnot. And one of those is when I see people trying to take something away from Jesus Christ, uh, that doesn't go too good with me. You try to take away the fact that he is God, that he is almighty God, you put him into the second place. Um, no, that doesn't go good. Uh, you try to take away the Lord Jesus Christ's millennial kingdom, his thousand year reign physically on the earth. Uh, that makes me mad. That's not okay. That's not something I can agree to disagree with somebody on. And so, uh, as I was doing the study on the sixth kingdom, and I know the Bible doesn't come out and say the sixth kingdom, I get that thing. Okay, and I've explained titles in the Bible and whatever else, uh, I try to stick with the scripture says this, but if there's no open sixth kingdom, then I'm using it as a description and I can back up what I'm saying with the scriptures. So I'm not heretical or something like that, or you're teaching extra biblical traditions of men or something. If I am, then the scriptures won't line up with what I'm trying to teach. Um, but you know, as I was going through the study to do this sixth kingdom thing, um, there was a lot of arguments that I could have gotten into and I thought eh, I can't really get into that right now um, Because it would just take the study kind of in a different direction and uh, I just wanted to get the thing out there and uh, a little bit of time sensitivity to it because I was trying to answer that Dana Ashley uh, her comment that I showed at the beginning of the study and So I didn't I left the whole big thing out. Well, um the Lord started dealing with me on that and uh, started to put these scriptures in my mind and I thought you know the Bible I think the Bible says this and I think that would line up with what I'm saying here about the sixth kingdom the Sabbath day of rest that's coming and Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath and you get into all this different stuff and um, so yesterday morning we were here at our property and uh, and I did the study, did, put the study notes together, went through the scriptures, myself and the Lord, and a real blessed time of fellowship with the Lord and His Word, and an amazing study coming up. So very deep study, 
Can't wait to preach it and get it out there for the body of Christ. I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, if there's any snowflakes hitting the screen, I can't really see too good. Or the lens, not the screen, but the lens. Hopefully it's not too bad. I see a little bit of blurriness there on my shoulder, but <laughs> a little hard to record in a snowstorm. Uh, not a real bad one, but, you know, it's there. So, look for the study coming up. But uh, give me your thoughts. What do we do, uh, brethren, about this in terrible, insane, leftist, liberal, communistic, socialistic, bunch of satanic nonsense that just wants to continue to push us down, take our freedom away, take our rights away? What do we do about that? Question number one. Question number two. Uh, new version. Uh, me exposing new versions. Should I show actual overhead camera? Of the actual book or just screenshots of Bible Gateway or one of them that's question number two question number or point number three uh, look for a big study coming out on the the seat the th excuse me not the seat the throne of David uh, really good study coming up so that is going to be it and uh, for those of you out there that celebrate Christmas happy early Merry Christmas um, for those of you who don't, no Merry Christmas for you, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and I, I just want to comment on that too. There's somebody wrote on the, I did a live stream and it talked about the Christmas thing. And some guy said, you know, so as not to offend your viewers, um, you should just not celebrate Christmas. No, I'm not doing that. Um, you know, if I was around believers in, in person and they were, oh, hey, we don't do the Christmas thing, fine. I'm not going to talk about it. But uh, I'm not giving up Christmas, my beliefs, my feelings about that time of the year, a very special time for us, a winter festival. Um, reminds me of the Lord on his throne in the north. Looks like this, with the beautiful trees and the snow and everything else, which I love. This is my favorite time of the year. And um, so, no, I'm not going to be giving it up. Um, I've been over that uh, in lots of studies, so that'll be that. Um, just to answer that comment. So we will see you in upcoming videos. Thank you very much for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching.